In the first walkthrough video of the Assessment Blueprint Workbook, we did steps one, two, and three here. We entered the learning targets, we determined the complexity, and then we determined the relative priority and figured out what approximately what percent of points uh, each learning target is going to uh, have. Now we're on to step four, where we start filling in the number and type of items that we plan and at what complexity. So for, for this portion of the process, we're going to be here in this sort of orangish section. Um, and since I expect each of these sections to be roughly similar, I'll talk through my plans in detail with one of them, and then when we cut to the next video, the, the rest of the planned items will, will be filled out and we'll talk about balancing. So, essentially, I'm going to have to address the, the content related to multiple choice items, the content related to binary choice items, matching, etc., uh, on this traditional assessment about traditional assessments. And, and so I imagine I'm going to ask similar kinds of things about each item type. So now the target itself is at the create level, but that doesn't mean that all of my questions are going to be at the create level. So if you recall from our class meeting about multiple choice items, you did create some multiple choice items, but that happened at the end of instruction. On our way through the course, we, through the class meeting, we also uh, looked at the item writing guidelines and we talked about some of the features and, and the requirements for multiple choice items. Then we evaluated some multiple choice items, some badly written multiple choice items. And then finally we ended with, with creating some multiple choice items. And I imagine that we'll probably do the same thing here on the assessment. So I'm going to start with uh, some of the lower level items about um, the item writing guidelines as they apply to multiple choice items. So or I'm actually going to go ahead and have some multiple choice questions about multiple choice items. And I imagine their complexity because I'm talking about the item writing guidelines, um, we might be at the remember, understand, apply level here. Now, it's un it would be unusual to have to create multiple choice items without having access to your resources, right? So remembering the multiple choice items off the top of your head, that's something I could measure, but it's really not something I'm interested in measuring. Whenever you make an assessment, you'll have access to all your notes. Um, and so I really want to make sure that students understand the multiple choice item, the, the item writing guidelines. So I'll have a couple of uh, multiple choice items about understanding the item writing guidelines. Now, there are five different types of items and so I might have a section of 10 multiple choice items total, but maybe two of them will have to do with multiple choice items. And then I'll have two multiple choice items about binary choice. And then I'll have two multiple choice items about matching and so on. So these will be the items that measure your understanding of the item writing guidelines. Like any other selected response item, they're one point per item. And so, of course, this calculates for me and tells me that there are two total points for multiple choice items on my assessment about writing good multiple choice items. So now these multiple choice items are not going to be the only uh, selected response items that, that I put on the assessment. I might also want to have some binary choice items. Um, and again, I might have 10 total, two per item type that my assessment is about. So I'll go ahead and select binary choice. Um, and these 
could either be at the understand level or they might actually be at the analyze level. Perhaps evaluate. I'll save evaluate for when I do my my constructed response. So I'm going to go ahead and have this at the understand level as well. There's one point per item, of course, because it's simply scored incorrect, uh, correct or incorrect. Now, a couple of quick things about how these cells function. First off, if I wanted to have two and a half items, it's going to complain to me that you can't have half an item. Likewise, if I try to have 0.5 points per item, it won't let me do that either. So the number of items and the number of points per item has to be a whole number. I've got my multiple choice, my binary choice. I don't need to have matching to fit the requirements of the traditional assessment uh, assignment uh, that you'll be turning in. So I'm just going to stop there. I'm going to have 10 multiple choice, 10 true false, uh, both at the understand level, and there we are. Now I need some constructed response items. Now, I'm going to have uh, several restricted response items. And what I imagine that these are going to be is that I'll have some existing items for the test taker to, to evaluate according to the item writing guidelines. Right? So now, when I write the scoring guide for these, uh, I'll probably award one point for correctly identifying which guideline is being violated and up to two points for explaining how that guideline has been violated. So that would be three points per item. Now, I could have a section of 10 of these with two for each item type, um, but I, I fear that that would make my test start to get very, very long. So I'm only gonna have one of these per item type. So I'll have one example multiple choice item to, to have, have y'all evaluate. Um, and because any number of uh, item writing guidelines might be violated by that uh, item, you'll, there could be multiple correct answers. Right, so in my scoring guide, I'll probably have uh, a few guidelines that the test uh, that the test item I give you violates, and then I'll list those on my scoring guide. So that's a restricted response. So now I have a section with ten multiple choice, ten binary choice, and five restricted response essays on the total tense on the total assessment. Uh, two of them are about multiple choice items. Uh, two of the binary choice are about multiple choice items, and one restricted response is about a multiple choice item. So now I need the actual essay. So what I'll do is have one uh, extended response essay item. Now notice that I did type that in, but since I typed it in as uh, the same way it was on the list, it accepted it and didn't complain. If I tried to put in something like that, that doesn't fit the design that's on the list, and so it won't let me do it. So extended response. This is where you'll actually be creating. So I'll have an extended response essay that asks you to create uh, a multiple choice item for your content area and probably the scoring guide that goes with it, which means that down here for my scoring guide learning target, um, the points for learning target six will also be represented in these extended response items up above. Um, but I'm gonna think I'm gonna say that perhaps 
uh, five points are available for creating that, that item. Um, and I think that's it. So 10 multiple choice, 10 binary choice, and 10 essays, five restricted response and five extended response, I think is plenty long enough for an assessment. So let's take a look real quick at the calculations that it's done so far. So now that I've filled out these items and the points, uh, four points are available at the understand level, which is a third of the total points available for, the, for this learning target. Three points are available at the evaluate level, which is a quarter of the points for this learning target. And then five points are available at the create level. So it calculates this for me, and we'll look at balancing that later. Now notice that right now, multiple choice items, learning target one, has 100% of the points available on this assessment, because I haven't filled in the other stuff later. So um, I haven't filled in the other stuff yet, rather. As I fill in these sections below, these calculations will continue to modify and I'll see how they balance out. Um, but since I'm expecting these sections to be very, very parallel with one another, I imagine that that's going to come out pretty cleanly as well. So now that I've walked through this process for learning target one, I'll go ahead and uh, quickly fill in the rest of the uh, assessment blueprint and we'll reconvene for the third video that talks about balancing points.